Good morning and welcome to Farmers Market Matters, staying on top of your game during market high season. I'm Jennifer Weber, the North Fork Local Food Coordinator with Community Farm Alliance. And if you're not familiar with CFA, we're an organization which has been around since the mid 1980s. And our focus is on supporting family scale farming through leadership development, grassroots organizing and policy work and programming such as the Farmers Market Support Program, which is bringing you this webinar. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This morning, I'm joined by Josh England with the Lexington Farmers Market and Nathan Flynn with Community Farm Alliance. And just so you all know that this, uh, this webinar is being recorded so folks can go back to it later. And this is also not our typical webinar format in that we aim for this to be a little more interactive than usual. Um, there is a lot of wisdom on the line here, um, and I think this is a good space for sharing some of it. So during this webinar, we will have several opportunities for discussion. Um, to participate in discussion, if you've not done so far, done that so far in a webinar, um, you can go to your control panel on the right side of your screen, and there are three ways you can participate. One is to type into the chat box and you can just uh, click on the little arrow next to the word chat and the chat box will show up. Um, you can submit a question doing the same sort of thing. Um, you can also raise your hand. I will unmute you and you can talk with the whole group. So um, we are excited to have you all with us today and let's get going. If my computer will move. So we're gonna focus on three primary topics today. Um, the first is self-care and market management for the now, getting successfully through the rest of this season. Um, the second is self-care and market management for the future, um, strategies that you can take during the off season or if you're year round through the low season to help make next year's high season more successful. And then also we're gonna spend some time talking about how you can take care of your farmers since this is also a very stressful time for them. Um, if we were in person, I would have some Play-Doh and some pipe cleaners to keep your hands busy and some chocolate so we can munch and kind of just be relaxed and hang out. But since we're virtual, um, I encourage you to grab your own items, um, break some beans, doodle, do a little knitting, um, grab something to munch on, whatever is gonna help you relax and uh, engage your mind for the next uh, half an hour or so while we go through this. Um, also wanna let you know, this is my first time um, being the person behind the webinar. So I apologize in advance for any technical glitches that we have. Um, so let's go to the now. Um, strategies for staying cool under the collar and on top of your market manage management for this summer. Um, what's the first step in managing a market? Well, the first step is taking care of yourself. Um, you know, we've all heard the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. And I know I used bucket and I know that's a picture of a bucket, but that just spoke to me. That rusty parchness of that bucket spoke to me about how frazzled and uh, worn out we all can get in August um, at our farmer's market. Um, and this whole idea of taking care of yourself may sound a little cliche, and it may sound a little like we're just promoting the topic of the day, but the reality is to effectively manage your market, you need to have energy you need to have some mental and emotional reserves for dealing with tense and fast moving situations and to roll with whatever punches come your way because you know as well as I do, they are gonna come your way. Um, now, folks who know me um, have raised their eyebrows at the notion of me leading a session on self-care. In fact, they roll their eyes and say, this must be a what not to do sort of thing. And it's true. Um, this is not an area of strength for me because it is one, but it is one where I'm slowly making some improvement. And I am doing so because I was this bucket at one point. Um, before coming to CFA, I worked at a community-based nonprofit running programs for vulnerable families and individuals, including a homeless shelter, food pantry, and transitional housing. 
particularly the last couple of years I was there, um, we were having some funding difficulties and I took on additional tasks um, because we didn't have other people, didn't have money to pay other people. And that's when I started directly running a homeless shelter, which really is a 24 seven, 365 opportunity to work. And I got really, really crispy. Um, the harder I worked, um, the bigger that mountain got, and I couldn't figure out why. And it wasn't until I left that position and started taking care of myself, got some of my reserves back, that I could look back and understand and see that I was too, I was too burned out um, to be effective. Um, my personal relationship suffered. My daughter was always calling me a grouch. Um, my work suffered. I wasn't good with the programs. I wasn't good with our staff or with our clients. And I uh, started having some health issues. Um, it just wasn't a good situation. So don't do this to yourself. Um, you know, life is going to be stressful. It is going to be chaotic. But if you have the emotional, mental, and physical reserves you need, you will be able to better respond thoughtfully and effectively to whatever comes your way. And self-care doesn't mean, in my opinion, that your reserves are always filled to the brim, just that you have a little something in reserve so that you can respond, so that you can deal with whatever's coming your way. And that's now my two cents worth from my soapbox. So what can self-care look like? Um, I think a lot of times self-care is misconstrued as something that has to take a long time, like that retreat at Pine Mountain Settlement School or a vacation to the Rockies. Um, it has to be expensive like that retreat or that vacation or a hot stone massage or has to meet some sort of self-care standard. Um, but self-care really is about what recharges you. If it's taking too long or it's too expensive and it stresses you out, that's not recharging you. So just choose something else. Um, this slide here is just an example of some things that actually self-care can be. This one right here, saying no, was kind of a revelation for me. Um, for the longest time, I thought self saying no was just a way to let somebody else down. But if I don't need to do it and I don't have the time to do it and it's just gonna take energy, I don't have to do it, then saying no is, is really an act of self-care. Um, and it's probably something I should do. One of the things, if I can get, um, is one of your handouts that you can should be able to access on your side panel is a self-care bingo. And I will tell you that I shamelessly stole this and modified it a little bit from Margie Steltzer, who is one of the Farmers Market Support Program technical assistants. Um, she led a self-care session at our last from Alliance staff meeting and encouraged us all to take this self-care bingo. And I think there were two things that struck me about this. One is it gave me some ideas about things that might be self-care that I don't necessarily think of as self-care. And it also made me think hard and long about what I was doing. Um, if I think about what I've done over the last week or two, um, can I get a bingo on this? Can I even scratch off five? And if I can't, um, is it because why is that? I'm not taking care of myself. Is it that I use other activities to recharge and so I need to scratch these out and write new ones in? Or is it some other reason? But it's certainly a self-reflective activity um, that you can use as a piece of self-care. Um, so how do you practice self-care? And this is an opportunity for, this is the first opportunity for us to share some of our words of wisdom. And remember you can um, put something in the chat box, um, the question box or raise your hand and I'll, I'll unmute you, whoops. Has anybody do something for themselves this weekend? Well, I can, uh, this is Nathan Flynn. Um, 
one of the things I do just about every weekend, uh, either on a Saturday or Sunday morning, I go for uh, a short to medium hike uh, with close to Cumberland Falls. And uh, with the job I have now, I don't get to spend as much time outdoors as I would like, uh, being in nature and in the dirt. So every weekend, I uh, sometimes I have to motivate, push myself to go do it because part of me wants to be uh, lazy and stay in because it's been a busy work week. I have a hard time finding the energy, but I know if I can just get myself out there and on a trail that within 20 minutes, my whole mood will shift. And I'll, I, and I'll think to myself, this has been a great decision. I need to keep doing this. And then by the next Saturday or Sunday, I'm like, Oh no, I've got to go outside. And then I do it. And I immediately uh, understand why I need to keep doing that. So hiking is one of them for me. Uh, it always lifts my spirits. Thank you, Nathan. It's actually one of those things that lifts my spirits as well. I know one of the things I did this weekend was say no to a few things I didn't have to do. And that allowed me to have a little bit of extra time at home just to chill out, to do a little cooking, um, to do a little, little binge watching of Parks and Rec that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do. And I'm feeling a whole lot better this week. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Well, I'll get more. This is Josh from the Lexington okay. Farmer's Market, and I'll get a little more into it, but I did the opposite of saying no. I said yes to a social event, um, even though I knew I'd be slightly tired because I am an extrovert and I recharge with people. So I went to um, the Railbird Concert uh, Festival in Lexington. Um, even though I knew I was going to be working in the mornings, um, my personal uh, recharge style is to be around people and so um, it was hard to say yes knowing that I would be a little bit tired to do this webinar this morning but um, I still did it because I knew it was good for me. That's awesome and I I, I appreciate that uh, uh, you have that extroverted example since um, I'm an introvert and staying home was really good for me so I'm glad all three of us took care of ourselves. And I hope everybody listening also took care of themselves this weekend in way, shape, or form. Uh, if we just have one more minute, I'd like to say just one more thing. Sure. Uh, Nathan. So one of the my failures with self-care most often is, is uh, you know, purely psychological. Uh, and on that self-care bingo, uh, one of the squares I saw was challenging negative thoughts. And... Uh, oftentimes on the weekend uh, after the work week, uh, I'll sit and I'll think about all the things I didn't get done or all the things I could have done differently or been more effective at. And oftentimes it'll consume me to the point that I have these really negative thoughts of I'm, a, I'm not doing very well, I'm failing. Uh, and I really have to proactively fight those thoughts uh, and sort of think about rather than the things I didn't get done, but the things I did accomplish and the progress I did make. Uh, in my life or in my work life. Uh, and I think uh, it goes back to something I heard a couple weeks ago of, of sort of learning to be nice to yourself. Uh, I find that in, in my thoughts, when I really start to examine the way I think about myself, sometimes I'm not very nice to myself. I, I say things to myself that I wouldn't, I would never say to somebody else. Uh, so why would I say them to myself? Uh, and that's something I have to constantly work on. And I, and that, that sort of self-awareness helps me a lot, so. Well, thank you, Nathan, very That's much. Um, okay, this is, uh, I have to say, I'm getting used to uh, moderating. Um, Louise shared that one of the most important things I do is to take time with family, especially my husband. It's usually a cup of tea on the porch or living room and we get to talk. I'm surprised often how this helps to share the craziness, get a different perspective, etc. He often says to take time for me. Another thing I do is hang on the happenings that are full of joy. It could be a funny text from a friend, a hug, a good book. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing, Louise. Um, I think that's spending time with other folks and also focusing on the little things um, that are available to us that can make us smile is fabulous. So 
Um, hopefully we've answered. Anybody else have anything before we move on? Okay. Thank you to the folks who shared. Um, our next part of getting through the rest of this market season is strategies for staying on top of market management. And I'm going to turn it over to Josh England, who I said earlier is the market manager of the Lexington Farmers Market, which is one of the biggest and busiest markets in the state and operates year round. Um, and continuing my streak of shamelessly stealing things, the pictures on here are shamelessly stolen from the Lexington Far Farmers Market Facebook page. Um, so, Josh, what sort of strategies do you use in Lexington? Sorry, I was muted on there. That was my fault. Um, let's see. I was trying to turn my webcam on, and I'm muted. I ruined everything. Uh, once. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm back now. Um, so, some of the things we'll talk about later um when we get into future and past planning and all those sorts of things um but the number one thing that i say is don't beat yourself up um and so this especially comes true is uh this time of year i sometimes hit snooze on my alarm clock um and i know that can be really hard and it can feel very stressful and sometimes you do have to hit a certain time that you're supposed to be at the market via your contract or just expectations, but sometimes um, so you uh, maintain your composure when a customer comes and complains about the sun being too bright on their eyes um, or something ridiculous like that, uh, you do need that extra five minutes of sleep in the morning. Um, so that's one of my number one things is don't beat yourself up for hitting snooze button. Has anyone hit the snooze yet this year um, in, in preparation for a meeting or going to farmer's markets? Many times. Many times. Yeah, so that's one of my number one things. Um, the second thing that I would say is I always make sure, um, oh, well, let me tell you more a little bit about the Lexington Farmers Market if you don't know. I am lucky enough to be a year-round full-time employee, which I know is super rare and unusual in the world of Kentucky market managers. Um, but uh, And I also have staff um, that are there seasonally, which also helps make my life a lot easier during the peak months. But I know that many markets rely on um, vendors and volunteers. I um, mean, one thing that often gets overlooked for maintaining your sanity is you often schedule people to help set up, um, but uh, especially for special events, you often forget to schedule enough volunteers to help clean up. And so at the end of the day, when you're most tired and the sun is most blazing and you just want to go lay on the floor and cover yourself in ice ball in ice cubes um, you're stuck rolling up electrical cords or tearing down extra tents so make sure that you schedule um, volunteers to help clean up any special events you might have um, and i know that i've been guilty of not doing that in the past but it's one of the biggest things that can make your life easier um, so those are the two things that I would say staying on top. Um, Jennifer, did, did you have any other questions or want me to talk about anything specific? Because I know that you had um, mentioned that there were some things, and so I want it to be more conversational. So ask me some questions and I will throw things out. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions, um, any uh, things that you're struggling with at your market this summer? Um, one of the questions I have for you, you know, you have a lot of customers coming in and out. Um, we're doing a lot more keeping, we seem to be doing a lot more keeping track of our uh, double dollars customers or seems to be more to do with FM tracks. How do you, how do you stay on top of that? How do you manage all of that and, um, and, get it done and get it done accurately. So um, you're not getting a call from Brittany saying, let's chat a little bit about whatever. Yeah, so um, we are lucky enough to have cell phone coverage in our area. And so I'm one of the few markets that is able to 
actively and reliably use the FM Tracks app to track um, our double dollars customers, but we also have a backup system in place just in case something goes wrong. Um, and so I would say one step to making sure that you're sane during the, um, the summer is to have a backup plan for everything. Um, and that can seem overwhelming, but when um, you have that plan, then you won't freak out if something goes wrong. Um, now, so, sort of the logistics um, of how to handle all the different kinds of components. Um, this year, like I said, I have summer staff, but in the past I've been doing, um, I've been the market manager of the Lexington Farmers Market. I just looked up for five years and four months. Um, and so um, during that time, my very first year being market manager, uh, I was staffless for the half of the season. Um, and so I did have to learn strategies on how to manage um, the information booth and all the struggles that come with that. Um, and so uh, I made a sign that said, be back in five minutes. Uh, and I think that if you don't have one of those in your box, then you need to add one of those into your market bo supply box because things are always going to happen at the market. Someone's power is going to go out or someone might trip and fall or there's something going on over in the corner because there's a dog that got loose. And you need to know that um, you have to prioritize like people's health and safety over people getting tokens. Um, but then when you get back, you want to be very gracious to the people um, and, and thank them for waiting um, and then get them their tokens. Uh, and if you don't have time to write down all their information and ask them all those special questions that FM Tracks sometimes asks, just get the bare minimum that you need for FM Tracks, write on a piece of paper and then enter it into the system or your spreadsheet or your special thing later. Um, but just always have a scrap piece of paper so you can get back and get caught up. Um, so that's two sort of strategies. Um, and uh, in the summer, I make sure that in July and August, I know that we're going to have five literally five thousand people at a saturday and a sunday market so i make sure that i have extra staff scheduled or extra volunteers scheduled during those peak two hours each of those days so that i can um, deal with the situations that are going to arise um, and people are more likely to volunteer for an hour or two um, one off than they are to volunteer for 10 hours on a and give up their whole saturday so that's one way i deal with it did that sort of answer what you were thinking about, or did you want me to go even into more specifics? Because I can, if necessary. Well, that kind of covered it for me. I'm wondering um, with our attendees, if y'all have other questions um, or uh, something more specific, if you would like Josh to go into more detail on any of what he has talked about. I can go into as much detail as who we order certain products from or which app we use or which thing we do, or I can do any of that if necessary. Cause I know that sometimes um, these webinars don't always get into those very specifics and you may have a question and I will hopefully have an answer or I can find an answer for you. Okay. I am not seeing any questions being, um, being asked right now. Um, I have, I have a question. Um, and this goes back to uh, at our 2018 uh, annual farmers market gathering. Josh gave a great uh, presentation on uh, keeping your board meetings to an hour, if I if I remember the premise correctly. Uh, and I would just ask Josh, how do you handle like board meetings this time of the year? Uh, and how have you handled certain issues that arise? Maybe somebody steps down, or you have a hard time getting your board together to meet. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the nature of my question. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a great question. And um, filling a vacancy in the middle of the summer is almost impossible. Um, so don't stress over it unless there's some reason why you're not meeting quorum or something like that. Just go with the, the punches um, and don't spend too many hours trying to recruit someone because uh, this time of year, no one really wants to add an extra thing to their plate. Um, and they'll want to think about it and maybe rejoin next year. So that's the first thing I say with managing the expectations and don't getting too overwhelmed with something that um, is going to probably take a lot of time um, and not necessarily be very fruitful. Um, with board meetings, uh, we implemented 
um, a, a video conferencing web conference software called zoom.us um, and uh, there's a free version and a paid version but it allows our um, board members to either video conference in or um, just use their telephone because I know that some of them don't have really great internet service where they live and they're able to still participate in the meetings um, and because of that uh, uh, a thing that takes a little bit of preparation on my part is all of our meeting documents are available on Google Drive. Um, and so even when the people aren't at the meeting, they're able to either download those um, and get those in advance or look at them in real time if they are have able to get to an internet connection during the meeting so that they have all the materials um, just like they were there. Um, because I know that sometimes when you are video conferencing or teleconferencing in, um, it can be a little uh, disorienting if you don't get to see all the documents or you can't see what's going on or see what people are talking about. Um, I have unmuted Emily Whitaker who has um, a comment or a question. I do. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to go back to the market and handling the farmers. We now have uh, some farmers who are doing really well and some who have lost all their tomatoes and and yet we have, um, and I just wondered how other people are facing, you know, uh, things like a farmer showing up or calling and wanting to bring his boatload of goods to compete with people that have been there every week. That's a thought. Do you ever turn away farmers? Are you, in this question, are the farmers, uh, you're referring to growing their own produce or are they buying and reselling? No, this is all um, a farmer vendor grown. Uh, we, you know, the resale issue is another, you know, another thought. I'd love to talk about that too. Um, well, this is a not, with all the farmer's markets having somewhat of a different setup, it, it, it's, uh, it can be a tough situation if your market allows, um, guest vendors or or if people are able to just show up and pay on the day of um, our market is a little different in that um, we are uh oh i lost you we lost you josh oh am i back now yes yep. you are okay so we're a little different in that we're a member-owned cooperative and i have some insulation and i have to say hey you have to go through our membership process if you don't um, go through this and are accepted by the other farmers, you can't show up. Um, and so that gives me some insulation. Uh, and so maybe one way that you can deal with this is to put a time limit on how short of notice that guest vendors can sign up, um, just so they're not at the last minute dropping in or showing up and expecting to be able to pay maybe a week notice is required or something along that line so you can, um, if you allow that, you can still have time to um, notify the vendors that have been there all year that we are going to have a guest vendor that is going to bring a thousand pounds of um, cucumbers this week. And so um, that all the other vendors don't feel like they spent a lot of time picking cucumbers um, and they should have been picking beans because that's where they would have been able to have their competitive advantage. So that's maybe one strategy to deal with it. But I know that that's a really tough call because customers sometimes want all the selection of cucumbers that they could possibly have. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I did. I, I have I have the ability to uh, send messages to all the vendors, and uh, they voted no. Don't let this guy in. And so, but as much as you can put on the farmers to take responsibility for some of these actions that insulates you and then you can say hey um, our current farmers uh, didn't feel that this was a good fit for the market at this time um, we encourage you to stay active in our community uh, and um, let us know um, especially next year if you'd like to be involved all year long i just wondered if this happened to anybody else i guess not uh, it it happened it happens at our market just about every year uh, in Whitley County, uh, and we we tend to have a fairly open policy, mainly because sometimes during, especially this time of year, we have a hard time getting vendors down and 
and vendors start to lose produce. So uh, we make the decision as a, a board uh, with input from our farmers to allow people to come in, even if they're only going to be there for a couple weeks, simply because we want to have enough produce to keep the customers coming. And we found that ultimately it benefits all the farmers uh, to keep that sort of regular clientele and keep them coming throughout the season. Because uh, we'll have some weeks where we just have two or three vendors and they have a small amount of produce. Uh, so sometimes it's really beneficial to have that, that new vendor come in. It, they have to pay their dues, become a member. Uh, but we tend to let that, as long as they're not reselling, we're a, a grower only market. So we do have some issues with people bringing a boatload of produce and then we find out they bought and resold it and then we have to deal with that. But that's a separate issue. Well, that's a good one to go on to next. What do you do? You make any farm, I, farm visits? Do you, do you, I mean, yeah, I've had so we, go ahead. Uh, so we visit everyone's farm every year uh, between our market manager and our board. And so, and we do that for two reasons. A, uh, so we can have a general idea of what people are going. And then B, when we do get a new vendor and we have that issue, it's hard if you don't do regular farm inspections and visits to then single somebody out and say, we're going to inspect you simply because there's a rumor or we just have our suspicions. Uh, and then they sort of can take offense to that. And so to avoid that, we just make sure that everybody gets visited. So when we do get a new vendor, if we do have suspicions, we can say we would like to visit your farm. And when they push back and say, well, I feel sick. Like this just happened to us two weeks ago. We had to kick, we had to ask someone to leave our market. Um, and we did a farm visit. They pushed back. We said, no, everyone here has been, we visited their farms. And most of our vendors have been with us for years. So we've been to their farm a dozen times. But um, we went and visited his farm. It became apparent that he wasn't growing most of the produce he brought to the market. Uh, and then we asked him to, to please be a part of our market, but we asked that you only bring what you grow. Uh, and then he said that he doesn't grow enough to really make any money. And so it resolved with him just saying he wouldn't be back. Um, which is an awful situation. No one wants to do it, but sometimes you just have to. Okay. I also wanted to say that Andrew uh, uh, raised his hand and it's unmuted. So if you have a question or a comment or. Um... Floor is yours, Andrew. Hmm. I th are you muted, Andrew? Okay, we're not getting him in. Um, hopefully we can get him in in a little bit. Um, I'm not seeing any other messages from him. Um, any other? Uh, any other thoughts on what you do to stay on top of market management or questions or hot topics with regards to market managing and getting through the end of the season? Well, to sort of address um, the, the previous question is, it's important to have a lot of these guidelines written down. So if your market doesn't have a clearly written down policy, then that can create confusion with your current members and new members you might have to turn away or deal with if they are reselling, but nowhere on your your website or no one on where on the Facebook it says you can't do that. If it's just sort of always been a tradition, um, then that can cause a lot of headaches. And so whatever you do decide to do with situation X, Y, Z with inspections or reselling, or if a vendor shows up late, have a, a written down policy. Um, and it can be as easy as uh, a notebook that you show to every single new member so that uh, of all the things that you've written down from the meetings, or it can be a, a more formalized member handbook. Um, but that will help you deal with situations as they arise um, throughout the year so everyone's not literally on the same page. Okay. And that was Andrew? I think. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, just a little bit. You're kind of scratchy. All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm Andrew with the Whitley County Farmers Market. Um, I'm just curious how you all go about vetting your vendors. 
How we what our vendors? You you vet them like you uh. Vet them. Okay. Vetting them. Mhm. Mm Josh, what do you do in Lexington? Um, we have a um, quite extensive um, ap op application, um, and so that's the first step where we ask um, not only what do people tend to grow, but why they want to be a part of the market, um, and how they're going to be able to provide and be active in the market through um, a, a longer season if that's something they claim. Um, and then once that happens, then we typically do um, a site verification. So I tend to use two different um, words. So a site verification is where we go and make sure that people have a farm or they have a commercialized permitted kitchen or that they have a, a, a barn or, or, or things like that. And then we do an inspection if there's some sort of incident where we have to go and um, make sure that they are growing what they say. But I use the site verification as a way just to, to build that dialogue and um, see what they have. Um, and so like Nathan was saying, I would guess that in the, the early springtime or early summer when they go out to these farms, they're not looking for things that are wrong. They're just trying to see um, what's going on. Uh, and then our board of directors vote on um, each of those applications based on um, talking to their friends that might know them or looking at their social media. Um, and so a combination of the application, the site verification, and the public presence of that, that farm or, far, or, or um, agricultural business, then that's how we go about vetting. It's, it's an extensive process um, the way that we do it, and it, it can be frustrating, especially to vendors that have um, a very short seasonal product like um, summer blueberry or summer blackberries. I mean, they just want to get in the market and get out. Um, but uh, it, it, we want to make sure that we know what we're providing to our customers. Um, and so I know that that's different than farmers markets that a lot of guest vendors or um, ha uh, have different options like that, but that's what we do in Lexington. Other ways that folks uh, vet their vendors? Um, looks like we have folks from Jackson and Jackson County and um, Perry County and Letcher County and Murray. Any other ways that y'all? Bet your farmers or your vendors? Okay. Well, um, oh, somebody going to say something? Okay. Yeah, I, yes, I will. Um, like a lot of you, we need the produce. So we pretty much let anyone in uh, if they've taken the PBPT training and. Um, you know, we give them a chance. Okay. And Kathy from Jackson County, um, you're unmuted now. You may have to unmute yourself as well. Oh. Kathy? Okay, I think we're having some technical difficulties getting Kathy on. Um, but when we can get her on board, um, looks like you're self-muted right now, Kathy. I'm showing a green microphone. Well, when we can get Kathy on, um, uh, we'll see what she has to say. Um, One, let's move on for a little bit. There'll be another opportunity for discussion um, at the end of the webinar as well. Um, the reality is that there are only so many things you can do during the season. And, and um, one of the things Josh was just talking about with regards to having structures and rules in place is one thing that you may not be able to get into place right now with everybody being tired and with things being chaotic. Um, but that is something that perhaps you can implement for next year. Um, if you have an idea that comes up, if you have a frustration, if you have something, um, make certain to write it down, jot it into your phone in the note app, um, leave yourself a voice message, um, something so that you 
can um, preserve that idea or that feeling and then do something about it um, during the off season or during the low season. Um, I wanna touch on a few self care things and then we'll go back to Josh for some market management stuff. Um, one of the things you can do is to make a plan to take better care of yourself next summer. Um, once you get a little bit away from this summer, think about what really drained you, what irritated you the most, what recharged you the most, who irritated you, who energized you, and use that information to make a self-care plan. Um, maybe it's developing a healthy habit. Um, maybe you need, maybe you want to drink more water or exercise more or bring in some meditation. Um, make certain that if you're doing that, that you give yourself plenty of time to develop that habit because most activities take about two to nine months to actually become a habit depending upon you and the activity and the circumstance. Um, you know, it may be that you need to get all your medical stuff taken care of before the season starts. Um, it may be that you just need to be tougher with the market rules at the beginning and then can be more lax later on and you think that will help things out. Um, it may also be that you need help from others. Um, maybe you didn't feel like you got much support from the board that was supposed to su be supporting you. Maybe you fe felt like you got this piece of information from this person and that instruction from that person and it just ended up being chaotic and creating more work for you. Um, Maybe you felt like you didn't have an opportunity or a good way to take a day or two off and that really would have helped to recharge you. Um, figure out what it was, build your argument and then go talk with your board or whoever else is in charge to figure out something different for next season that can help you take better care of yourself. Um, maybe it's some other training. Maybe it's working out a different routine with your family. Um, I think there are lots of ways that you can think about how you can support yourself and do better with taking care of you based on your experience this past summer. Um, so Josh, what ideas um, do you have going forward for next year? And again, I will tell you, I shameless, shamelessly stole these from your Facebook page. Yeah, um, it can always be daunting. Um, because you never know when, oh, a lot of people don't know exactly what day their market's going to end. It might be the first cross, or sometimes people have a more set time. And so um, the, the first thing is just to breathe and make sure that you try to get all of the ducks in a row in the off season so that your summer isn't exa as exhausting um, as it can be without those sort of preparations. Um, and so staying on top of things includes um, maybe uh, researching um, or, and practicing using FM tracks uh, more or uh, uh, getting some of your board members in the off season to help you data enter or go through and review some things, uh, maybe in a less formal setting than a, a board meeting because sometimes you just need an extra eye on something. Um, and so uh, it's all about planning and I know sometimes in the main, um, uh, the main throws of June, July, and August, you can't really plan. You seem like you're just trying to paddle to keep your head above um, water. Um, and so really use that September or October time to reflect on the, the, the season you had before and start making plans, like you said, um, on how to deal with those trouble spots. Um, one of the biggest things that we have at our market is during market sales hours, um, vendors cannot politic and talk about the market and the market rules. I mean, so I know that sometimes people will try, vendors especially will try to come to you at the end of market and make a suggestion. And that's really um, the last time, the last time you want to hear something is when you're tired and they'll be grumpy. Um, and they're often, it's more of a complaint than a suggestion. And so then it ends up with a sort of fight and no one wins with that. Um, and so we say, uh, if if they have a comment or suggestion um, to let you know on Monday, Monday or Tuesday, um, just so that uh, everyone isn't just angry at each other at the end of market, because that creates a tense atmosphere. Um, and so I know that can be hard uh, to have your vendors not talk about, oh, should we change the market hours or should we eliminate this musician or should we do this or that? But it really does make the life of a market man 
structure a lot easier if they can just focus on running the market that day and also trying to figure out ways to solve a problem that wasn't a problem until the vendors started talking about it at 11.15 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> um, so uh, what, what other strategies do some of um, the other market managers and, and farmers in this webinar use to prepare for the following season yourselves? Have you done that before? Is that sort of a new concept? Do you like uh, just throw everything on the ground and run away as soon as you can? Or, or what's your, your strategy? Kathy, you are still unmuted if you have something to share. Well, this is Emily, and I will tell you that I keep a logbook, a manual logbook of every market and maybe potential vendors and ideas and things that happen at that market that maybe aren't worth an email to anybody. But, you know, if the thing happens, if whatever it happens more than once, you know, I can always look back and see. And that's been really helpful for me. I'm probably not as good as looking at looking at last year toward the end of the season, but certainly at the beginning of the next season, I can look back. Andrew, did you have something to share? Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh uh, yes. Uh, we're kind of like our market. We've been like been on the fly, like uh, we just, you know, just on the spot doing stuff. Uh, I think something that's going to help us out next year is that we're going to make a uh, a calendar and put the stuff on it as and you know present it to the all the vendors so they all can see what's going on every month at the market. Uh, I think that's that'll help out a lot. That's a great idea. Anything else from um, folks who are attending or Josh or Nathan? Okay, I have one more thing and then okay. I'll, I'll be done jabbing. But um, so there was, a, there was a popular radio show I listen to a lot <laughs> and it's called Intelligence for Your Life been on forever and they just go over these studies and different reports that are released from academic institutions uh, and I love it and they condense it down into like five minute little segments and I, I've read I heard one a couple weeks ago and then I followed up and, and read the, the study I was done by Penn State University and it was about setting it's gonna sound weird but it's about scheduling time in your day to worry like 15 to 30 minutes every day usually like in the morning or in the evening Maybe when you have a natural period of break, when maybe you're getting your coffee in the morning, where you allow yourself to stress and worry over all the things that you need to get done. Uh, and you can, writing a list usually helps, uh, helps me. Writing lists is my biggest thing that sort of calm my, my head down. Uh, but I was thinking as we were talking uh, that you could think of like certain meetings like the same way, uh, you know, keep writing your thoughts down and like Josh was saying, you can't always deal with everything in the moment, but you can write it down and come back to it and sort of set a time when you allow all that worry and stress to sort of come out and you deal with it as the best you can. And then in between those those periods, like the study says that the rest of your day, you you need to get into the habit of, of sort of tabling everything you're worried about, everything in the market that you need to get done or you is an unresolved issue. You set it aside until your next 30 minute window of worry in the morning. Um, and it was something like 60% of patients involved uh, or participants uh, reported uh, sort of being more productive in their day-to-day -day lives, getting less consumed with worry and stress because they only reserved 15 to 30 minutes every day to deal with those things. Um, and it doesn't necessarily apply to what we're exactly talking about right now, strategies for staying top of the market in the future, but I think it's a good tool to sort of manage your own stress and worry and make you more productive and efficient uh, throughout your day. Uh, sort of reserving that stress for a certain period of time. Uh, just figured I would share that. Thank you. And I, th I, I think this, this is a very appropriate place to share it because I think that's one of those things, at least for me, that would take some practice. And so if I wanted to be good at it by next June, I probably need to start working on it now. 
just knowing myself. So thank you. Um, I want to move on just a little bit. Um, the last, our last topic is your farmers um, and what you can do to support your market's farmers. Um, it's also a chaotic, exhausting time of year for them and they're likely more stressed, um, especially in years like this year when the weather has been crazy and maybe they haven't gotten to plant something or their tomatoes have gotten destroyed like Emily was saying or they, they're not producing like they're supposed to be and they've taken a financial hit. Um, and so you may be seeing farmers who are more uh, cranky or harder to get along with than normal. Um, so what are some things that you can do to support your farmers? You can take time to chat and check in with your farmers, even the farmer that you know is gonna complain about resale or whatever the case may be. Um, maybe one of the self-care things you can do is set that boundary and say, you know, you've talked to me 10 zillion times about this, you need to, like Josh was saying, we don't talk about this at the market. Um, we can deal with this at another time outside of the market, or we've done everything that we can do. If you want to continue taking this issue, take it on to the board. Um, but taking that time to chat, um, to see what's going on with your farmers, seeing if there's changes going on, um, and knowing what some of their stressors are. Um, maybe they've got some stress going on in their family. Maybe they've got some production stresses. Maybe they've got everything. Um, the Farm Aid website um, has a lot of resources for farmers, um, from mental health resources to general support, since farming can be pretty lonely. Um, also, if things get really dire, um, there is the suicide um, hotline for specifically for farmers. Um, there are some wonderful organizations in Kentucky, KCARD, your extension office, natural resources and conservation services, Grow Appalachia, who are doing business planning and production um, planning and education with farmers. Um, let's see, um, this is where the technical pieces I'm not as good at. Um, one of the handouts is a list of resources for you and for your farmers. Um, there's the Farm Aid, Farm Crisis Center. You can look through here. There's a couple of articles on assessing mental health um, and then contact information for the production and um, business planning resources that were listed. These can all be um, potentially useful resources for you and your farmers. Um, in helping to support them. There are also some resources for you. Um, if you've not been to Community Farm Alliance's webpage, this is our homepage. Um, if you go to programs and farmers market support program right like that, then you can see more information about the program. You can see where the markets are located in Kentucky you can click on our toolkit. And the toolkit has information not only for starting a farmer's market, but also for helping to manage and make program improvements and all of that type of thing that may be helpful to you as you are managing your market. Um, another thing that we offer um, are, is our blogs. Um, if you click on, scroll down the homepage to the bottom and click on blogs, up will pop a number of things. Um, we do market mindfulness blogs approximately once a month, once every other month with various topics related to managing a market. Um, and you can just scroll through here and see if something is useful for you. Um, we also still have all of the Breaking Beans shows that Sister Kathy did. And um, this is just sort of a sit back and look at something good going on, um, kind of like Louise was talking about, taking, taking stock in some of the small things and some of the things that make us smile. Um, and finally, the, uh, all of the webinars that Community Farm Alliance has done um, are uh, on YouTube. If you just search for Community Farm Alliance, you'll pop up, you'll pop up this page. Um, you can also subscribe, so it just, is easier to get to. And this has all of the webinars that we have done over the last several years. You can go through and see if there is a topic that is of particular interest to you to help you out. 
Um, in addition, um, the National Farmers Market Coalition webpage has a wealth of resources. They even have a special locate, or they have a, even have a special um, tab specifically for market managers. And then last but certainly not least is the Farmers Market Support Program team through Community Farm Alliance. James, Margie, Kristen, Nathan, and I um, are happy to help out in um, any way we can um, to help you manage your market and uh, stay sane doing it. Um, anything else? Other comments, other suggestions, other ideas on self-care market management um, that anybody wants to share? Well, I want to ex use this time to also extend um, an invitation if anyone is does find themselves in Lexington on um, a weekend or um, on a weekday and they want to meet up for coffee or tour our market, um, they can shoot me an email or text me and I'd be more than glad to take some time out to walk around our market with you and show you how we um, operate or if you have any questions about um, a, a more specific or technical issue. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and I know also the Farmers Market Support Program staff have been around a long time and so don't be afraid to ask a question because um, why reinvent the wheel if someone else has already spent hours trying to figure out how to do something um, and so you can contact me at josh at lexingtonfarmersmarket.com or um, uh, anyone at CFA has some of my other contact information and they'd be more than glad to share that um, with you or just check out lexingtonfarmersmarket.com and you can find ways to get in touch with me. But I'm really glad to help, and so don't feel um, bad about reaching out and asking how to, to do something. And even if it doesn't seem like it necessarily directly applies to our market, or you may be thinking, oh, Lexington's too big, they don't have to deal with these problems. Um, lots of people have talked to me, and I've thought through a lot of different situations, and so maybe I do have a, a little bit of um, insight that I can share. Thank you, Josh. Um, I appreciate your openness and your willingness to um, help strengthen the entire farmers market network around Kentucky. Does anyone else have anything they want to share? Okay. Um, well, I appreciate everyone joining us today. Um, for folks who contributed questions and um, their own experiences, um, I very much appreciate that. A special thank you to Josh and Nathan um, for helping out on the panel. Um, just a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and will be available on CFA's YouTube channel. It'll probably be a week or so before that happens, um, but when it is uploaded, we'll let folks know via Facebook and our market manager's Google group. Google group. Um, just looking into the future, our next Farmers Market Matters is on Monday, September 9th at 11 a.m. And James Cochran, our Farmers Market Support Program Program Manager, will be leading a session on finding the right location for your farmers market. So stay tuned to our networks, um, Facebook and Google group for details on registration. And again, thank you for joining us and I wish you smooth sailing for the rest of your season. Have a good day.